Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Welcome everyone. <laughs> oh, am I looking old or what guys? Am I looking old or what without this shaving going on here? It's been, uh, <laughs> I do not look like myself at all. How are y'all doing this evening? How are you? How are you? How are you? I uh, hope all is good and uh, hope things are going well. Yes, George, I look forward to seeing you in the New Jersey show. I will be flying out tonight uh, in just a few hours, probably about, well, uh, I'll be leaving for the airport in a few hours, probably about 1 a.m. And uh, I should be arriving in Jersey by 9 a.m. So I look forward to seeing you at the show. Uh, welcome Tom and Wayne. Uh, Debbie, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I know you can't stay. Uh, hopefully, um, you know. Uh, you'll catch it later and it's you know a lot of these uh i've been on a you know a little late on posting this uh time huh didn't give you guys any kind of heads up at all just be mindful if there's not a class or something i would let you know uh you know if there's a class uh you know always count on a class on a monday or wednesday evening uh but if there's not a class i'd let you know but as far as letting you know about the class um it, it was, might be a little late from time to time. I'll try to get that a little bit better. I got a new young lady in the office who will be helping set that up. Uh, Dave, don't even ask that question. Uh, if you could look at me right now, you would know that I don't. <laughs> I don't sleep. Um, usually from... My proper times would be from 4 to 6 in the afternoon and 4 to 6 in the morning. But, unfortunately... That didn't happen this afternoon, and a lot of times when I get calls, I don't. So, but uh, anyhow, it'll uh, it'll slow down and stuff at the end of April. You know when the shows are over, all that wonderful things. All right, so what are we doing tonight? We are working with modeling. Some of you guys mentioned pistol grips and things, and things. So um, I thought we would do a. A class on uh, working with modeling and uh, see what you uh, you know give you guys some insides and outsides and stuff and um, if even if you don't have Aspire software because we will be working primarily in Aspire uh, it's uh, you know good information to know um, and you might, you know, we'll do a V-carve or something too as well. And all, it's not all about the modeling because you can always pull that STL model in. Uh, you can always pull that STML model in. And uh, let's see here. Bear with me a second while I set up a file. And then we'll switch over and get this uh, party started, should I say. Where is my Ospire? Aspire, Aspire. Um, got a new young lady in the office. She's moving stuff around on my computer. I can't find nothing. <laughs> All right. Um, so yes, uh, yes, Dennis. Absolutely. I encourage that. Please call me between four and six p.m. <laughs> um. I kind of feel that that's when people are leaving work and driving home. So they really can't in that car transit time frame that gives me that window, you know, when they're stuck in traffic on the way home. Because I know come, you know, 6, 30, 7, 8, so on and so forth, it's gonna, the phone's going to start ringing again. Um, but uh, anyhow, let's uh, let's get this party started and let's see what we are uh, working with. 
we are going to be working in the Aspire software and the let's uh, get things changed over here make sure before I change over that my microphone is set up so you guys do not lose audio all right Look at there, I got a cursor and everything tonight, guys. You should be able to see my mouse and everything. Yes, yes. All right, we're gonna create a new file in the Aspire software. I had to gather my thoughts here for a minute. Uh, this is gonna be just a small, uh, I don't need a really a big, a much bigger piece than 12 inches by 12 inches. And I'm gonna go um, probably about a uh, half inch thick not a, and I wrote a quarter as I said that a half inch thick because I was thinking uh, I'm trying to think about pistol grips you know how thick they would be uh, half inch half inch that'd be kind of a that would be, be real thick so we probably want to you know we probably would want a, uh, a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch um, uh, you know grip or something but uh, we'll go with a half inch for right now and we'll just at least get the modeling started. We're gonna work with a single sided project today. And um, depending on, now th that, that's the thing, depending on the grip, you know, it's usually flat on the back side uh, and all. So there's really no need to do a double sided project on this. So we'll work it, it we'll work it as a single sided project. And uh, we're going to touch off on the material surface we're going to uh, start off on the center we're going to click OK and that'll get us in let's see here hey Bob welcome Bob um, alright so the first thing I need to do is I created a vector file uh, we're going to be kind of modeling off of 1911 and um, even though I own, I don't own a 1911. We're gonna model off a 1911, and let's go into where is my file? Desktop receipts, a simple design, 1911. All right, so my project size. I need to. Uh, Let's go with a 15 inch wide because I have the whole firearm here. I'm not going to need that for the pistol grip, but I want to show you guys this uh, DXF file. Snazzy, huh? Snazzy. So we got our uh, pistol grip here. Let's uh, grab that vector file there. And let's turn off some of these other vectors that I accidentally grabbed. Bear with me a second. All right, let me group that together so that way we can see that grip. Okay. Hey, Antonio, how are you doing? Welcome tonight. Dennis, now you're already hitting me with the hard questions right from the beginning. Uh, let's start off with some Q&A real quick. Uh, is it true that when you're making a big model, like a wildlife scene, to make the model separate for better results? Well, it all depends. Now, you, you can model, let's say that you have a deer, you have some trees, you've got a cabin, you've got some mountains and things. Um, you can create them separately, but not in, you don't need separate files. You can create them separately in different levels, um, you know, as independent components. And then once you get all the modeling and things done, then you can create a level where they will all come together and build. But, uh, I don't know if you mean by separately, if you mean by like a, you know, a model of this, a model of that in all different types of, you know, three different files but you can create your models independently. Now, me personally, I would. I would create levels, you know, one through three. Let's say if I had three objects, a cabin, some mountains, and a deer, whatever. 
uh, I would create those models separately because that way I can work with them. I can shut off the visibility of those levels and things and uh, I can hide those other components while I'm focusing on that particular model, especially if I'm building or sculpting that model from you know scratch. Now, of course, if I'm bringing in these models already made, um, then it really doesn't matter. You know, uh, if I if I bought these models on design and make, and I brought them in, then you know they're going to be all in the same project. But if I was physically modeling this, um, I would create them in different components. Now we can actually model this firearm uh, from start to finish uh, very easily. We can create a model of this firearm that you see on the screen. Uh, I was going to focus on the grip but uh, we could literally build this vector into a model so you can see that process. You guys would just chime in and let me know if that's what you want to do. But first, let's see what this vector would look like as a B carve. Might as well while we're here. Okay, so we're going to go over and we're going to V carve this. Uh, I'm not going to do... I better do a flat depth. And let's see, I'm using a 60 degree V-bit and an eighth inch end mill. Let's see how we do. There's one open vector in there, that's fine. I know which one that is, it's down here in the bottom. So let's see what we got. He's kind of grouped together. I might need to close him because I think he actually goes around the whole border. Uh, he does, so hold on one second. Let me go in there and close him off. So we have an open vector. So how do you identify an open vector? Well, first, we're going to go in and we're going to select all open vectors. Now, it's going to say no open vectors in the design because I have grouped objects, right? I've got grouped objects here. So let's go through and uh, make sure everything is ungrouped. And now I can come in and let's see what we get. Select all open vectors. Now. The open vector is down here. I know exactly where it is. Um, it's right there. But if you didn't know where it was, if you were just looking at this, you would probably think that, well, wait a minute. It didn't select anything. What's open? Well, when you tell it to select that object, that object is selected. We can now use the zoom to selected item, the magnifying glass zoom to selected item, to bring right in to that item. You know, if you can't visibly see it, you know, when it's out in full, select that open vector and then zoom into it to bring us up to where we are. Now, this vector here um, is my closed vector. This part here is trash. Okay. So, um, I didn't even need it to begin with. And, you know, uh, so let's go back in and... Since I didn't need that, it was an insignificant part. It was uh, it was uh, ignored to begin with. Let's take a look at our preview and let's see where we're at here. Let's see how we did. Um, preview the visible tool pass. I was just curious to see how this looks as a 3D or not a 3D but a V carve. All right, so right here notice that none of my grip got created because those lines are overlapping those lines are overlapping and so if we come in and calculate this let's come in and select the all control a is also a shortcut let's calculate this again let's see if we missed anything this time I believe it will also ignore that. Yeah, let's see here. If we preview that visible toolpath, it's gonna ignore that checkered pattern because of the simple fact that I have some overlapping lines. You can see here that my vectors are overlapping on this grip on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove that overlap. I'm gonna remove that overlap by going into my offset tool and just temporarily because I'm V carving this, I'll put it back how it was. I'm going to offset it inward 
a distance of oh thirty thousandths of an inch <clears throat> just to separate that now when I come in and create this we should be sufficient we should be able to see our pattern so if we come in here and select that vector and calculate it should not ignore that part for this point on and look at her let's see here what's it doing there there's a big old pocket right there let's see what's happening here Free the visible toolpath so that pocket is coming in that's creating all right so we are going to turn off one of these little vectors right here ah there's some duplicates duplicates gotta love those duplicates all right so that's a single vector but if we zoom in that's a duplicate all right we don't need that one so we can delete that and now I've got that there all right one more time ladies and gentlemen Laney's gonna get it right he swears we're gonna open this up calculate that toolpath my eighth inch end mill cannot flip fit anywhere in there so it went ahead and just um, it went ahead and just created that so there's my little checkered pattern so not a bad looking uh, part now if I calculated this with no flat depth let it go to its full-on glory as deep as it's going to go in the places it's going to go to uh, let's preview that toolpath not much change you know not a bad looking piece as a uh, as a V car but we are here to talk about modeling tonight modeling so let's get into it all right let's see what you guys and girls have to say um, oh let's see here Dennis, she said the last one that I did, I had 19 files, STLs, then brought them in to the main model one at a time. Nice. Nice, nice. All right, anytime we're modeling, we always start from the foundation up. And um, this is going to be a modeling class. So what we're going to do is, if you are modeling actual pistol grips, you would have your... Um, vector files and again let me because I had all these nice and pretty grouped together you group that together while I've got it here because I want to make a copy of it let's move that over use my control key to move over a copy of this pistol grip here there's a little bit of lag in my screen tonight so bear with me that's not where I dropped that okay so if I was modeling a grip and I wanted to, you know, create a, a nice contoured pistol grip with a some type of checkered pattern, I would not use this pattern as an example, but we've got our outline here. We have our profile of our pattern. In the Aspire tool, our modeling tools, we would use the create shape. So let me take uh, and ungroup this and let me take this checkered pattern out of the equation so we're gonna go with holding the shift key down and selecting that we're gonna focus on this 
Now on this, depending on how much of an arch, so 90 degrees would be a full on dome. Let's go into a 2D and 3D model view. Um, on my angle, I want a nice, and let's, let's focus in on the grip itself for right now. If I use a 90 degree curve profile, that's gonna be a full on dome. The lower my angle goes, the more, the slighter my dome gets. So for this, I would probably, I just want a nice little slight curvature. Uh, so I would probably go with about a 45 degree curved profile. And I would go no limit. I want it to, you know, have that nice contour all the way from one side of the shape to the other. And this would be an add because I'm building this model up. And we would click, let's call this our, uh, main grip body and remember you would have a left side and a right side uh, you know on a typical if you were actually really modeling your pistol grips uh, we would probably mirror this uh, so let's click apply and let's build that foundation now we got to close the preview here and so that way we can move in now if I look at this, 45 degrees is just too much of a pillow top. That would be very uncomfortable on the hand. Um, it's just too much. So before we go any further without resetting or anything, let's just go back to and slide it up a little bit 30. I'm probably thinking it's going to be around a 20 or 15, but let's check out and see what 30 does. I want just a nice subtle curvature. There you go. That actually doesn't look too uncomfortable looks like it would fit in the palm nicely so we'll leave it at that now when you're creating when you're working in the modeling software you want to once you create your component if you are going to continue the component creation process then before you go clicking on any of your other vectors because if I were to go clicking on this circle right now then it's going to remove my model and it thinks that I want to do this with the circle. Okay? Uh, you know, so before we go switching over, uh, you want to make sure that you create or start a new component. That way it builds that model and uh, moves on. It'll turn it into a grayscale in the 2D view. And now we're free to, you know, start our next, you know, components. Now these um, screw holes here, uh, we're going to uh, create a bit of a chamfer uh, on this. And what I want to do is come in and we're gonna be using a kind of an angular profile. And but first I need to come in to the screw, simulated screw that I've got here and I need to offset to that distance uh, for that screw and let's come in here and let's see what our distance is so I know exactly what to offset to so I'm just going to use the measure tool and measure between two points and I'm just going to pick two points so the distance is only 0.046 so not bad all right so I'm going to close that tool And on this guy right here, we're going to go into the offset and layout tool back in the drawing tab and we're going to offset it inward. 0.05. You can tell that I traced this image. It was not drawn to scale uh, it was a trace because none of this is looking good all right so let's go ahead and let's recreate the uh, screw because I did create that outer ring let's recreate the screw here <clears throat> with the screw I'm gonna come in I'm gonna double click and go into transform mode I'm gonna hold my control and my shift key and I'm just gonna pull this in a little bit to create that copy on its center I'm going to come into my rectangle tool and we'll just make this rectangle 
like a little flathead screw slot. I'm gonna take that uh, rectangle tool or that rectangle and I'm going to center it to the screw. So select your rectangle first, center the screw head last and align to the center of that last selection. Now I can come in with my scissor tools and trim away some lines. Hopefully these classes are not too rudimentary or boring for you guys and girls. Hopefully, uh, you know, uh, you enjoy them um, and you know hopefully you pick up something I know some of the things that we do you may uh, you know have seen you may know how to do it it might be you know I want to start kind of challenging you but I'm also at the same time I've got to understand that uh, you know there are different levels of knowledge out there so hopefully we can kind of uh, make this work all right, so let's go ahead and offset that inward as well. And once again, I'm gonna close that tool when you're done with it. We're going to delete that. I'm gonna open up. Now, if I wanna be precise, those two screw holes are the same. If I wanna be precise, if I select my two objects here, okay, I'm gonna group them together. If I open my size tool, they're 0 0.4799 by 0.4763. So I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on 0 0.4799, the width. 0 0.4799 is gonna be my magic number. So if I come in here and go into transform mode, hold, mode. Hold my shift and control key and move that in ever so slightly. While it's still selected, I can come in here and 0.4799. Offset that a little bit, not very much. And once again, my little rectangle tool. Not being too, you know, fussy about this. And if I align my rectangle to my circle, selecting the rectangle first, the circle last, I can now come in here and interactively trim it with my trim tool, my interactive trim tool. And once again, we can clean away those lines. Now that we have some uh, decent vectors to work with uh, you know clean we the checker pattern I uh, will deal with that uh, momentarily I'll show you a nice way or uh, an easy way to create uh, that kind of that diamond that checkered pattern uh, with your draw line tool and using the mirror and rotate tools all right, so for this, I need to go back into that modeling tool here. And let's see if we can turn this so we can actually see when this is created. We're gonna take our two, oops, not that one, this one. I got a little bit of a line right there. When I trimmed away, it was not taken away and I assume there's gonna be another one. You see that vector right there? You see how you can see that little offset, that little black notch? And when you click on your, uh, you know, your vector, you see there's that black back there. That lets you know that there's, you know, something overlapping it. Okay. One more time. Charlie Brown, one more time. Charlie Brown. All right, this one I want to do a kind of a uh, an angular profile. I do want about a thirty degree taper on this, and I want it only to be a slight amount, maybe an eighth of an inch. 
Actually, I'm sorry. I do not want any base height on this. Uh, I want to let it just kind of go to what it needs to be. Uh, and no limit. And this time I'm going to s un you know, pull it down. Uh, subtract it is the proper term. And I'm going to click apply. So that should create that, that chamfer <clears throat> in there. Now, the center part, again, starting a new component, a new component, my middle area here, this is going to be a flat profile. It's going to go all the way through my half inch material. I want to just completely bring it down uh, through. And we want to subtract that as well. Okay, to create that little chamfered screw hole there. All right, we're gonna start a new component. Now, if you wanted to be fancy, you could create the model on the two screw, you know, the little screw head and everything. Um, we could do that. But right now I'm focusing on making the grip, not, not the metal screw that's gonna go through the grip. All right, so now we could have we could have created both of these screw holes at the same time. We could have selected both of them and created those models together. Uh, there's no need to create them as separate components. However, uh, I did. So we're going to continue that process. We're going to select this here. And again, we're going to do an angular profile, a little 30 degree, uh, you know, countersink. No base height. No limit. We're going to subtract it. We're going to click apply. And as you can see, I didn't even have to click apply. I already applied it for me. And then once again, we're going to start a new component. We're going to select that inner vector and that's going to be a flat profile that we are going to a full, uh, you know, 0.5, subtract and apply. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got here. Walnut grips. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, when we, when we preview this, you know, we could go back in if we wanted to see this in walnut. We could go back in and we could change this to a walnut. Um, and notice how I do not have my walnut. I got walnut here, but that to me, this the preview is not walnut. That's that's more of a bird's eye maple. When I think walnut, I am thinking my dark brown. And so what I'm going to do in my Vetric VCard Pro is I'm going to open the application data folder. I'm going to go into my bitmap textures and in my wood, I have this nice dark walnut image here that I'm going to copy. And now in my Aspire, let's click OK on that for a moment. I could go in here and open the application data folder in the Aspire. You know, one of the neat things, it's one of the great things that's so good about this, uh, doing this, uh, just to give you an idea. Let's say that you're making a sign uh, for someone or, or, or a design. And you want to send them that proof image, that preview image of the design. Well, the actual board that you're carving in, you could literally take a picture of that board, make sure you get a nice full on picture. It doesn't need to see the background, your workbench or your table saw it's table or nothing. You want a nice clean cropped image of your board and you can bring that picture in and drop it into the application data folder of your software. And you could literally do the toolpath preview on that board 
to see what it would look like when it's cut. That's a very nice thing because if I send a board a picture to a customer, a preview image saying, hey, here's what your sign looks like. Go ahead and proof it over. Let me know if you want to change anything uh, before I carve it. They're actually seeing the project on the board it's going to be cut in. So that's cool. All right, so let's get out of that. Uh, we've dropped that image in. And now I believe I should be able to come into my tool here. And I should be able to see, and if I don't, oops, not marble. We don't want to make it out of marble. If I do not see my walnut in there, which I don't, then I need to take a quick moment and save, which I should do anyway. This is going to be our 1911 model. I don't know why I'm saving it in my receipts folder, but that's where it's going. All right, now I can go ahead and exit out of this. Go back into my Aspire. And now that image that I put in the application data folder should be in there. So again, a great little neat trick to be able to sh like actually put your wood in there. Take a picture of it, crop it out nicely, and uh, you know it would look uh, you know very nice. So now my walnut board is in there. We can click OK. If we go back to our 3D modeling, you know, nice looking walnut grip. Okay, let's go back to where we were here. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Now, alternatively, just like I did, you can go on to online and type in walnut wood background and find one of these background images and you can bring them in and uh, you know, work with them. All right. So we've got our we've got our pistol grip uh, you know, fairly modeled, but now we are going to be creating a this this checkered pattern. We're not going to be using this pattern here, so I might as well just go through and delete it. So let's go through. I don't want to delete all my vectors, so bear with me a second while I turn some of these things off. Oh, my fire is going nuts tonight. Okay. I got a little roller wheel on my mouse that is super duper sensitive. Okay, he's grouped together. That's good. All right, now I can hit delete and get rid of that. That's right. Now notice what I did. I'm going to hit undo, control Z, because I actually deleted my little chamfers so I need to make sure that my chamfers are not selected as well um, you know let's go into my modeling tools here and make sure that they're not selected I'm actually gonna turn them off for a moment now I can focus on oh. Come on, Lenny. You know how to do this, buddy. All right, so that one. That one. Don't want to get rid of the boundary. Need that. Delete. Clean up this guy here. And let's go in. Okay, now when it comes to creating our checker pattern, I'm going to take our screw holes uh, and I'm going to move them. This is where layers is going to help me kind of separate uh, things on the design. 
Um, so we're gonna put these on different layers. So I'm gonna take just my screw holes with the screws and everything, and I'm gonna make a uh, move them to a new layer. Right click and move them to a new layer, and I'm gonna call this my uh, grip screw holes. We're going to uh, give it a maroon color and make it non-visible right now. I do not need it visible at this time and place. All right. Now, in a new layer, I'm going to go ahead and call this my crosshatch. All right. Awesome. Hit enter to lock that in. I want to make it active by clicking on it. Everything I draw from this point on, I want to go on that crosshatch layer. Now I'm going to use my line tool here. And I actually have, you know, some freedom as to which way my crosshatch pattern is going to run. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, with, you know, how I want that. Do I want it kind of uh, vertical? Do I want it at a little bit of an angle? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, and let's see if we can get kind of really in on this design and since we're not doing the modeling right at this moment let's close this and maximize our 2d view so we can super duper focus on this crosshatch okay should be full screen now for you guys all right so in my draw polyline or line tool draw line or polyline i'm going to come up in here and i'm just going to start off with a line Okay, now from here, I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, whatever angle that you want this at, whatever angle you want to uh, be with. Now, that is kind of my longest points right there. I believe that is my longest point, so I don't need to extend this out any further. Now I'm going to come into the offset tool. Now, in with every vector, you have a start and an end point. Let's look at the nodes here. This green node at the bottom is the starting point of my vector line <clears throat> and so on the right side everything over here should be the outside of the line everything over on the left should be the inside of the line so if I come over and I offset outward let's say that I want these lines let's say I want a pretty uh, wide uh, crosshatch Let's say, or, or you know, a pretty narrow crosshatch, should I say? Let's go with a let's go with a sixteenth of an inch apart, and let's see what that looks like. 0 0.0625, and let's click on um, offset. Okay, so if I go with that, it's going to be a very tight diamond pattern. Okay, uh, on this, it's going to be a very tight diamond pattern. So I'm going to back that off a little bit and I'm going to go a little bit wider. I'm going to go with, uh, do I want to double it? Mm, uh, let's go with 0.1. Yeah, that'll be pretty. We'll go with that uh, pretty decent. All right, now I want to make sure that I have select new selected and let's kind of, uh, once again, let me get this on the screen so you guys and girls can see what's going on here. I want to make sure that I have select new selected. That way when it creates that new offset, it will select it. That way I can just click my offset and come all the way across. I'm just clicking offset to get all the way across here. Okay. Now if I go back to my original starting line and I offset it inward, I can go ahead and offset the opposite direction. Now notice that my lines are short, right? Well, that's what we have the wonderful and lovely, um, that one's not even gonna be on the grip. That's why we have the wonderful and lovely extend tool, okay? So if we go into the extend tool, which is the second icon on the, second icon on the edit vectors, edit objects menu, sorry, uh, third row, edit objects, uh, third row, second icon. This, what this will allow me to do is extend my lines. Uh, and rather than extending all of these, click, 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 and extending them, which I could, I could come in here and start, if I zoom into this area here, 
I could start and just extend those out by clicking on these two points all the way along you know start finish finish come on now wah, wah. I think I froze it up. Let me zoom back in there. Let's go with a control Z on that one. Start. Finish. Are you going to glitch on me right in front of everybody? You goofball. One. Two. One. Two. Alright. So, I could do that for each and every one of these, but why? Why? Undo is our best friend, so undo. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna undo. And I'm going to extend this line, my main line. Uh, so let's go into uh, the extend tool. But before I do that, I have to have something to extend to. I've gotta have some kind of stopping point. So let me draw a little line right up here let's go up a little higher than this point here and let's create a little stopping point now I can extend to that point and I don't need this line anymore now once again I can go back into that offset tool offsetting inward and continue on where I was Okay, a little bit, uh, we don't need that last one. You know, a little bit quicker, a little bit, you know, uh, easier. Now, Bud Laney, what the heck are you doing? All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to take and group all of these except for the grip. We're going to group those together. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate them 90 degrees. Okay. After I make a copy. So watch this. I'm going to click on copy. Then I'm going to take that selected object and I'm going to rotate it on its center 90 degrees. Now I'm going to hit paste and paste the original back in there. Okay. What? What? How mind blowing. Well, I don't want that. That crosshatch is too gritty, right? It's too gritty. It's 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 a, it's too much like a grid. Uh, I don't want that. I want a nice diamond pattern. So let's undo that rotate and let's kind of uh, look at how our line should be. And my my main thing is, is these lines here need to be kind of rotated a bit. So let's rotate them. Oh, on their center, let's rotate them about 45. 45. That'll be a night. Uh, yeah, 45 looks good. All right, now, is there a magic extend tool? Yeah, there is. Uh, we're going to select these all, and we're just going to hold down our shift key and scale them up a bit. No, nah, I don't want to scale that way. I don't want to scale that way. I want to scale this way first. I'm going to hold my shift key. I don't want to I don't want to change my spacing. All right? I don't want to change my spacing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and scale before I rotate. If I scale after I rotate, then it's going to change and scale my spacing and I don't want that. So once again, we're going to go 45 and let's rotate her out. And um, good. All right, down here I'm going to ungroup you front group so I can bring continue on with this line here. I'm going to offset it out um, inward. I'm sorry. I'm going to offset it inward and just kind of finish off. Uh, that one's not necessary, so we'll remove it and go from there. Now, once again, let's group this back together. 
You guys are like, holy cow. All this just for a cross hatch? Alright. We're going to group that back together. Now I want to go ahead and copy. I'm actually going to just mirror this. Flip it. Let's see here. If I flip it uh, horizontally, not not a jaw across the job center on itself. Nah, still too gritty. I don't want to do that. If I rotate it, yeah, let's rotate it back. Remember, I copied this now, so we're gonna rotate it back uh, negative. 90, not 900, 90. Okay. And before I paste, I'm still not, I still got my paste there, but before I paste, I'm going to ungroup and I'm going to take this here and I'm going to go offset, finish that off. Don't need that one. And I'm going to take this line here and offset that outward. And that'll be good. <clears throat> now that I have that, let's go ahead and... Group that back together. Now if I paste, then it's going to paste my grid right back on there. Okay? So that original position it was in. So I didn't have to, I didn't, I had to wait to paste. Now here's the cool part to this. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, select both of these groups. We're going to group them together as one item. Our pistol grip, if we come in here and select that last okay that last I can now interactively trim interactively trim don't want to weld because weld will remove everything in the middle I want to remove everything on the outside I can ever interactively trim and clear outside of the boundary and the boundary is the last item selected okay so if I clear this then it's gonna bring my hatch in within those lines. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to turn and with that cross hatch, let's go ahead and remember everything I just drew on that cross hatch is on its own layer. So I can turn that off, right? Uh, I've got my grip hole layers here that we're going to about to clear out. Um, I've got, you know, my layer one and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, Group because when I trend all of those uh, that hatch and everything was ungrouped So I'm gonna group those back together Just so it's easy for me to select now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on those screw holes and On those screw holes this outside boundary right here This is gonna be the outside boundary with my grid my little crosshatch grid uh Selected first and that boundary last. Okay. I can, let's actually do both of them at one time. So stand by. Let's select this outside boundary here. Let's go down here, hold the shift key and select this outside boundary. Let's group those together so it lo the software looks at them as one item. Now I can grab my hatch. Grab that and we can clear inside of that boundary. To remove those away. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, what if I didn't want them to be so close to my boundary, right? Well, let's undo that. Let's take and offset these out a little bit. I've, they're grouped together, so both of them are selected, even though you can only see the one on the screen. Let's offset those outward. Oh goodness, what do you think? An eighth of an inch? 
eighth of an inch. How big is an eighth of an inch in the scheme of things? Let's offset that outward. Ah, uh, it's kind of wide, huh? Let's go with uh, 16th. The thing we got to think about also is that V bits and we come in and cutting those this grid in there too, but we'll go with uh, 0 0.07 offset. That's good. That's good. All right, now on those two new offsets while they're selected well you know once I create them that's why the select new I can just go ahead and group them together now I can grab my grid first select that outside boundary last holding your shift key while you click on it and now we can interactively or trim not interactively sorry we can trim uh, and we can clear everything inside the boundary to remove that away now those boundaries I don't need. I can delete that away. Okay. I don't need them. So now when it comes to our model, remember we've got our model here. Let's turn our model back on. We've got our 1911 model here. Well, I want this crosshatch to follow the contour of this model. That's called projecting. So if I come in and I, I don't want I don't want any outline or anything. I want that crosshatch to go from border to border. Uh, if I wanted it to be within a boundary, then I would offset this outside boundary inward. You know, um, I, but I want it to. I want the full pattern to kind of have, you know, that crosshatch. If I didn't, like I said, I would take my outside boundary and I would offset it inward. Maybe I want this crosshatch just kind of within the rim of things. I don't know. Um, but I would offset that inward, you know, 0.07 to kind of keep the same distance as this. And then I could trim, you know, uh, this crosshatch to that, leaving that outside untouched. And it might even look more aesthetically better, you know. Uh, you guys, that's where something you can throw in the comments. Uh, would it look better if I leave a little bit of an unetched rim here or go full size, uh, go full on? Um, would it look better as a crosshatch uh, just even if I went, went bigger on that offset? If I went bigger, let's say a full on uh, point one five you know five thirty seconds somewhere around there you know and we have just the cross hatch within that you know that might look good as well well let's let's do let's do both let's do both let's turn off my screw holes hide those for a moment that way I can Hide my models for a moment. Turn them off in the modeling tab. That's what that level is. That way I can come in here and regroup everything except for the two outside boundaries. And the reason why they're not staying grouped is every time we trim and every time we, like when I go to trim this, uh, interactively trim this and everything to this inside boundary, then it's going to ungroup it as well. Uh, the best thing to do when it does do that is as we come in and interactively not I keep saying interactively trim as we trim clear outside outside of the boundary while it's still selected if we quickly hit the G on our keyboard after we close our tool we hit the G on our keyboard to group it back together we don't have to keep messing with it I think that would actually look much more attractive as a crosshatch all right, so let's go ahead and let's carve this. Now, uh, let's take, and first thing is, is we got to turn our model back on for a moment if this was our pistol grip. We've got to turn our model back on because we have to have it visible, visible while we're creating that 3D finished cut. Leave a border, yeah. Yeah, now you're going to see, uh, when I turn that model on, you're going to see some uh, buffering, guys and girls. Sorry about that. 
Okay, while it was generating that buffering, you're, while it was generating that model, you see some buffering. Uh, yeah, the border looks nicer. Uh, it looks much nicer. So while the, um, with the model visible, now the 3D rough and 3D finish toolpath, I don't even have to select the models. It knows that the models are in the uh, design. And so when I calculate these toolpaths, it's gonna pull off whatever's visible. If I only wanted to create the model on the body grip and not the chamfer or the holes or anything, I could uncheck those and it's only gonna calculate that toolpath on what model is visible. Now, because we have a model in our design, um, we can come in and go into the material setup and notice that my model thickness, because of that dome, exceeds the thickness of my material because I went full on. You know, uh, let's take a look at this. Let's look at the 3D view and my model is exceeding the thickness of my material you can see just by oh so much not very much at all so uh you can tell uh right here model thickness 0.5342 so 30 thousandths of an inch so let's go ahead and let's bring it down to our i'm going to bring it down to actually a 0.49 Let's go. Oops. Ah, uh, that's eight thousandths, eight thousandths. That's not a whole lot. So bear with me. Let's go here. Let's go point four three. I want at least, want at least a thousand. Let's put that all the way at the top. Too much. Point four six. Well, bring it right back where I wanted it. Point four eight. All right. That should be good. Now, if I bring that model, let's click close on this tool. If I bring that model all the way to the bottom of this, I should have about 20 thousandths of an inch on top of my model. I want that little skin of material on my model because my board, the top of my board is flat. I want to have to mill away this material before it starts shaping that curve. I do not want any flat spots in my you know, in my model. I don't want any flat spots in my design when it's finished carving. So I want to bring it down just slightly under the surface so that surface area has to get milled away. So let's go ahead and click OK now that that is set up. And in our 3D rough, let's pull this back into a uh, the Z plane, these icons up here, by the way, I looked in the Y plane just to see where it was exceeding my material. Uh, the Z plane brings me back to where I'm looking at a top view. Now, of course, uh, this is a big board, right? Big board, small model. I would not be carving this whole thing out. So I'm, I'm going to use the model as a boundary. And I'm going to go with a boundary offset of about 0.3 um, because my board would not normally be this big. I am got it this big because I want to model the whole gun here in a moment, but we're focusing on this. So we're going to go with a 0.3 offset. Uh, I want a 40 thousandths of an inch allowance above the model when that rough cut comes in and cuts the material away. There's not going to be much material to be roughed away, just a little bit on the both of these sides. and. Uh, I want to leave a small amount. Uh, I don't want the bit getting that close. And I may, you know, there's not going to be much to it. 
So actually, you know, let's calculate this and see what it tells us. Yeah, so if you see just a very, very small amount, uh, the, the amount of material being milled away is that three, uh, you know, that point three, because I'm using quarter inch bit was the boundary around my model, you know, uh, and the, the screw holes. That's the only two areas that are getting milled away. And so what I got to be careful about is that I am using my model as the boundary and I'm using a three thousandths offset. Well, that's going to affect my center holes as well. Okay. Notice I'm rastering along the X and it's, you know, it's back and forth, back and forth these lines. That is not an optimal tool path. So we're going to open this back up and let's look at the rastering it along the Y. We don't have the option of doing an offset, uh, but we do in, uh, when we get to the 3D side. It would help if I actually changed it. <laughs> All right. There we go. That'll be a little bit more optimized. You know, it won't be such a back, bam, 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 back and forth. All right, let's preview this and let's see what we did by going with that 30,000s offset. Uh, did it throw off the screw holes any? I don't believe it did. I do not believe it did. Good. All right, so with that, now we can go in and create our 3D finish toolpath. This is, uh, I'm going to use a fairly wide ball nose. The only, the only small part of uh, this process is the chamfer. So I'm going to, you know, I don't need a 16th inch bit for this. Uh, my eighth inch ball nose, even heck, my quarter inch ball nose uh, would be sufficient. It just won't do that well in the chamfer area. But let's go with our eighth inch ball nose. Again, I'm going to maintain the model as the boundary. And on the boundary offset, I'm going to maintain that 0.3. And let it run through that. Now, yeah, as, that's, as this is calculating, I'm reading some of the comments. Uh, purple heart with maple inlay, that'd be pretty sharp looking, huh? All right, let's preview this tool path and see how well we did. Okay, this gives me a nice little area to run a profile cut and everything around. But now we've got our model and the simulation quality is not that grand because I'm not I should be uh, in a low simulation to make this run fast for you guys but let's talk about the crosshatch now when it comes to that crosshatch okay that crosshatch here uh, we are going to be doing a profile cut we are following the line these are open vectors okay they're not closed these are open lines and they're intersecting one another. So we would not run a V-carve toolpath or anything like that. This is going to be a profile cut. Now, would we run one half and then the other? Is it okay to have the intersecting lines when we're running the profile and everything? Yes, it is. Uh, normally, you do not want overlapping lines or intersections and things. Um, and you can come back uh, and uh, you know figure out uh, if you want to run you know one set of lines separately from the other but it's not necessary uh, let's go over and create that profile cut I am going to be using my uh, and I only want a very small very small cut 16th of an inch and I'm going to be using my V bit uh, for this the 60 degree you know, even something a little tighter, a little smaller, uh, 30 degree or something. But let's go with um, 15, you know, let's go with our 60 degree for now. <clears throat> and I want to be on the line. 
on the line. I want to come down and we'll just name this crosshatch. And we can calculate that. Now, I did not calculate it the proper way. And I did this on purpose so that you can see what would happen if you do not project your toolpath onto a 3D model. So what I mean by project is when we have a 2D vector and a 3D model, we must, must project that model or that, that 2D vector toolpath onto the 3D model so it follows the contour, the curve and everything. And so if I were to, let's, we're not gonna project, let's close this and take a look at what we've done. Let's go back into that preview and let's preview that selected toolpath. Okay, you see that it does not project, right? That my toolpath is not getting carved. All right, you'd be, that'd be kind of, you'd be kind of a little bit irritated because if I reset this back to a blank board, if I ran that crosshatch first, check it out, the whole pattern, right? Oh yeah, okay, that's cool. Now if I go in and run my, you know, 3D rough cut and, uh, you know, carve that, okay, hey, you know what? Still doing all right. But when I go to run my 3D finish model, my 3D finish toolpath, well, jeez, what happened there kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, and... You know, we don't want that. So you got to go into that crosshatch and you want to project onto that toolpath. Now seeing those little diamond pegs and everything, I also saw while I was looking at that, that a 16th of an inch was a little too much, a little too much. So I'm actually going to recalculate that to only about 20 thousandths of an inch, uh, maybe, maybe 0.03, uh, but 16th of an inch was a little too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and click calculate. Now that we've projected onto that 3D model, I'm gonna re-preview this. And of course, uh, let's undo that, or not undo, let's reset that preview. Let's go in and make that a little bit deeper. I do want, I don't want, that's too small. Let's go 0 0.04, oops, 104. Even 0.06 didn't look bad, but I, you know, I still, uh, it didn't look great. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to preview all the tool paths in order. Preview the visible tool paths. We're going to do our rough cut. Three D finish. The cross hatch. Okay. And I'll change the simulation quality so you guys can see it in a better simulation view. Um, but now let's create our last and final cut, which is the profile cut. So with that profile, we're gonna go into that final profile cut. This is cutting through the entire piece of material. It is cutting with a, most likely a quarter inch end mill. And <clears throat> I could even cut it with my eighth inch end mill because uh, it's only half inch material. But we'll click OK on the quarter inch. We want to be on the outside of the line this time. Make sure you change that to the outside of the line. Now I'm not going to add tabs. You know, but let's add tabs because I didn't add, add tabs in the last class. And you know, so let's edit the tabs and let's come in here and let's add some tabs. So I'm going to put a tab here, 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 and there. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add those tabs just by clicking on them and they're gonna be a quarter inch wide. They do not need to be an eighth of an inch, 0 0.0625 is fine. And calculate. All right, if we preview that final cut. Okay, we've got our grip here. But let's look at, let's see if I can adjust 
the simulation quality from standard. Let's at least get a 98% representation of what our project would look like. Let's uh, pump it up the volume a little bit. Now this is going to take a second, so there's no sense in running the rough cut. You guys know what the rough cut looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and run these three and preview those visible toolpaths. And when you're in a higher quality in the preview, you can see your tool marks. You can see the, uh, you know, like uh, on our radius and all, you can see those tool marks in the very bottom around here. And that's, you know, my eighth inch bit is a little too wide to be getting in there and stuff. Um, so, but that's all going to be cut out when I do my profile cut, but a much better simulation. So while that is calculating, while that is calculating, uh, you guys and girls have any questions or is this pretty much understood? You guys like, show us something we don't know, Laney. Show us something we don't know. As soon as this is done, we're going to take a quick moment. We're going to model that firearm just like if we wanted to carve that as a 3d model on a uh, on a plaque or something we're gonna build that model up but uh, let's see what we got for some questions here um, I pick up something valuable from every class well thank you Jerry hopefully uh, share with me what that valuable insight was so I can remember to say it again <laughs> all right uh, Dennis, I would not be here if it was a waste of my time. Thank you very much for that. Uh, there are so many new tools, so many new tools in V9. I don't know what I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know yet. Uh, 45, John Esther says. 45. Degrees or 45 caliber or 45 is how old I'm going to be or how old I look. What is that 45 for, John? Unless you're sharing somebody that I'm not aware of. Um, or is it 45 new tools? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, could you also do this um, uh, with the engraved tool? Uh, George Zura, you know, a uh, very good question. Could you do this with the engraved tool? So we have the quick engraving tool. Uh, let's go over and look at, and by the way, let's go back. Uh, let's open that preview just so you can see. So this would be our, let's, uh, let me get it into a position. Um, bear with me. Let me zoom in and get it into a likable. The nubs. Even at, you know, the nubs at 0.04 might be a little high. Might be a little high. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. You know, I have to see about that. Uh, but let's get that model to refocus itself. There we go. A little bit better. All right. Now, what uh, John Zur was asking is, could we do this with the quick engraving tool? I'm assuming that's what you're asking, John, the quick engraving tool. Because we do have a fill, we do have the option of you know how far we want to step over, and we do have the option of uh, making a hatch or a cross hatch. So the question of the day is, is 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 yeah. Now the only thing that we're missing, John. Uh, duh, um, sorry, hold on, uh, George. The only thing we're missing is the ability to project onto our 3D model, okay? But if you were trying to create just a flat cross hatch, you know, of something or a pattern and things, then sure, you could use this tool to create it. Um, but we are, we do not have the ability to project onto that 3D model to follow that curve or that contour, all right? But, um, great question. All right. Now, let's see what else we got for questions here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. How would you copy an existing grip? Dave Garvin, how would you copy an existing grip? Well, a couple of ways. Uh, one, the best way would be the digital probe. That would be the most effective way to get a most accurate representation. Um, of that 
But the um, you know the other way is is to you could literally if you have if you have if you have uh, the Aspire software you can you can create a component from a, an image and if you took a nice quality over the head shot to scale and scaled that image to scale of that grip and all you could import that in and uh, build that model off of it or trace off of it uh, and uh, you know go from there uh, from that image and everything but the best way to get that model or you know that gun in that, that existing grip in would be the digital probe really other than drawing it yourself measuring it drawing it you know and uh, you know it doesn't it's not hard to do to uh, measure grip and draw as far as the contour and the curve the thickness you know how tall is it how wide is it you know does it taper in does it taper out those kind of things uh, Doug yep yeah, uh, flatbed scanner you know that would work too you know instead of a photo you could flatbed scan it right into the program or right into your computer and then import it into the program um, could I probe a set of grips also yes Paul yes you could um, that's what we we're just mentioning uh, I really want to make grips for my browning high power absolutely um, reclamation will work do that um, now but the uh, let's let's so as far as this now when it comes to the pattern okay okay this is the crosshatch let's turn the crosshatch off okay that's a very basic crosshatch you know kind of modeling off this but now let's get Let's get a little bit fancier, okay? Let's get a little bit fancier. All right, I'm gonna go on to Google. Actually, I'm not gonna go on to Google. I, I would go on to Google. Uh, should I go on to Google for you guys and girls that don't know how to do this yet? There's a lot of you to do. Okay, we're gonna go on to Google. <laughs> I have to ask myself. All right, we're gonna open up a new tab and I, I'm hoping that it doesn't buffer. Let's find out if you guys get any buffering when I'm on Google here. But I'm going to type in a uh, Flourish, F-L-O-U-R-I-S-H, Flourish Vector. All right. Images. All right. Let's see here. Let's find a nice looking pattern that I would want to carve on my grip. Let's see y'all. That one's intriguing me. Hold on, let's go, let's look a let's look a little bit. That one's pretty cool. You know, it's kind of plain Jane and basic, but uh pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to look for something with a little bit of a floral, fl not flower floral, but you know, a little bit of a, a cool design. All right, let's let's so we don't not waste a lot of time on this. Let's grab something that. Let's grab this guy right here. Let's grab this guy right here. Nah, he's blurry. He's blurry. All right. All right, let's go with this. All right, our double S is here. Let's uh, save this image. And uh, we're going to save it as uh, SS. Looks like two S's to me. I don't know. Um, or X's. X's or S's, one of the two. All right, so I just saved an image. Now I'm going to go into my drawing tab over here and I'm going to import that image. Import that image into my design. Let's go back over here since we're working with things. Did I not just import that image into my design? Is it that small? Let's try that one more time. Ah, he's hiding. He's invisible.
Well, that's a neat trick, huh? How you like that? Um, let's open up our trace bitmap tool and see if there's anything on the... He is like disappeared. Where's my... Uh... I love this. Select layer vectors. Okay. There's no image there. All right, one more time. Let's go back. <laughs> Dag gum, he got me on that one. All right, so let's go here. <clears throat> That's a little old. All right, Google, help me out with your tools. Show me only images that are larger than 800 by 600. Filter them out some more. All right. Cool beans. All right, let's bring that image in and see how well we do. All right, uh, once again, we're gonna come in and we're going to turn off uh, these other layers to hide them for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and make my uh, layer zero active so when I trace this image, when I trace this image, it will um, put all those tracings on there and my trace bitmap tool we're gonna go ahead and use the color trace. I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in some of these colors. You can use the black and white as well. But I'm just gonna start pulling, looking at all my shades of colors. Let me turn that fading off so you can see all those shades in their full glory, those grays and things. As I start to check off those colors, they're going to start filling in with my fill area. Now if I go to Far, then it starts to pick up noise right we don't want that let's back off you know uh, and so uh, that's a decent looking fill so let's click on preview apply to lock in that preview and close to close now we can go into our bitmap layer and hide that bitmap so now we have our tracing okay now I can go ahead and size this down And I'm going to drag it off to the side for a minute while I open up my other layers. Oop, not the cross hatch. I don't want that. And let's see here. Let's bring this guy over. Let's rotate him. I don't know if I would have a pistol grip that had a design like that on it but hey why not all right you see my cursor change that's showing me that I'm in the center of my vectors here okay and let's give this a little bit of a stretch Now, I could carve this into the handle. I could build a model off this, you know, uh, and make it, uh, you know, three-dimensional. If I went into the modeling tools uh, of the, um, of the uh, Aspire software and went into the Create Shape tool, I can go ahead, I could go ahead and build a small, very slightly, I'm going to go with only like a 15 degree, uh, angular type profile to this uh, no base height absolutely zero base height and add that in with uh, no limit and click apply all right we just went black screen all right so you're going to see the screen come back in just a second, guys and girls. Okay. That, uh...
it did not like me modeling that part um, so it went black screen so let's uh, let's see how let's see if it makes us go black screen again I do not want to go black screen so black screen means that, uh, that it actually cut off my screen from you guys <clears throat> All right, so let's look in the 3D view, and you can see ever so slightly, you know, that model. Uh, 15 degree was a little too light. Let's at least pump it up a little bit. Uh, let's go with 30, and let's give it a little bit of base height. Not much. and apply that okay so now this model is not the best we wouldn't we wouldn't actually work off this you know but now that i have an outline i could go in and i could start uh, building the shape off of this i could start kind of uh playing around with the uh, create shape tool without having everything you know selected if i want to get rid of one of these vectors it will actually reverse this so let's do that i'm going to reset this reset i'm going to reset and if we go back into the 2D view, all I have to do, all I should have to do now, all I should have to do is ungroup this model. And if I turn off holding my shift key, if I turn off not my control key, my shift key. <laughs> Dadgummit. My fingers are getting fat on me. Alright, let's close this tool for a moment. Alright, one more time. Let's zoom in here. Alright, if I hold down my shift key, I should be able to turn off this outside vector. <laughs> it doesn't want... This outside vector. Turn off... I didn't want to delete it, I turned it off. Alright. There we go. Alright. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, I swear. I swear. Okay. If I turn off this outside vector here, I should be able to... Um, or even better yet, because see, that model is created between these two vectors right here. You know, that's why we had that rim. And it was carving away everything, all this wide space here. Well, now it would build this model up and carve away all the little space in there. So if I were to build this model up, I could now go back into that Create Shape tool. And again, with that same 30 degree profile and everything, and click Apply. Make sure I don't go black screen. Okay. You can now see that, uh, you know, it, it changed that model. Now, of course, this is not the best looking piece uh, of flourish in the world, but it serves a point. Now, I want to smooth out 
my components. But now I have I have to bake these together in order to smooth them out. I got to bake them together as one item. So if I click on my body grip here, my main my main grip body, sorry. Uh, hold down my shift key and select on all of my components here. I can now bake those individual components as one to smooth them out. But I don't want to do that and have to recreate the wheel. I don't want to have to go back. And also the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group them together as one. <coughs> I'm going to duplicate that group. And I'm going to, on my level here, I'm going to insert a new level. And I'm going to move that grouped duplicate to that level. That way they're separate. This way, this individual group, if I, you know, go back and ungroup it, you know, my individual components, those are my master copies. I can come back and change any one of these uh, and everything. Because this group here, this upper group, is about to get baked as a single component. Okay. Now, as now being baked as a single component, now I can apply a smoothing filter to smooth out some of that rough detail. Okay, now that's too much smoothing. It's taken away too much detail. I can back that off a little bit so I can try to maintain some of the detail in the design whatever whatever design it may be it could be a name your dear uh, uh, we got some buffering sorry guys we got some buffering uh, it could be a deer it could be whatever whatever you want on your grip you know you can you can build that up you know you can build up that model now for me uh, this flourish is just awful so I'm gonna close this and I'm not going to apply that smoothing filter I'm going to uh, get rid of this grouped model and on that flourish I'm going to delete that because I don't like it. Uh, on this flourish here I'm going to delete that. Now that could also be sunken into the wood you know whatever the case may be. But I, I don't I didn't like that. What I would much prefer to do if it were me would be to carve that in. And so if I carve that in, let's see how it would look as a carving. If I come in to the V carve toolpath, 60 degree V bit, zero start depth. Uh, I'm gonna let it just kind of carve as deep as it needs to go. And, but I want to project onto the 3d model calculate first before you calculate select your vector the guy instructing you should know to select your vector all right so select the vectors and calculate i'm going to reset this preview we're going to look at the 3d finish and the new v carve together and see how we did as far as this being this design, preview those visible tool paths. And while that's previewing, let's see what else we have to say. Um, Doug, you retracted a message. Okay, uh, let's see here. Any questions on, so far on this? Any questions? phone will stop ringing in just a moment all right somebody must not know that we're in class one of our customers that was a customer call I'll call them back in a minute all right <clears throat> so let's see how this looks as a you know not, not too shabby as a uh, as a carving you know I would much rather it be a carving and then a model 
You know, if I was doing some kind of, uh, maybe I would mirror that and rotate it so one was facing one way, one was facing the other uh, on the same handle, you know, kind of size it down a little bit. But, you know, not too shabby, you know, as a, uh, you know, as a model. Let's see what it would look like in walnut. Not bad. You know what I mean? Your name, you could do your name. You could do, you know, uh, you're not going to get this gun till you pry it from my cold dead fingers. You know, all that stuff. <laughs> you know, whatever you want. Um, you know, uh, just project that 2D vector onto that 3D model. Now, I think you guys have got that. Let's go ahead and do the profile cut. Let's cut this out. Preview that selected toolpath. And there we go. Got our grip. Now on these holes here, we want to pierce through that, but the you know the model uh, didn't, right? The model didn't. So we could go in and we need to clean those out and everything. So of course, in our profile toolpath, our profile toolpath, cutting all the way through the material, so we might as well use that as well. We want to make sure that we absolutely select the correct vectors. So I'm holding down my shift key to add in those two inside vectors. And I'm recalculating that toolpath. Now the software is smart enough to know that on the outside of the line I'm cutting from my outside profile, but on my inside vectors, I'm cutting inside the line. And it reverses that for me. So if we look at our 2D view, and we look at our solid view here, um, which you can't see the inside solid view. Let me turn the, let me hide the model so you can see, hide the model. You can see that on the inside of my line, it's going to, you know, carve on the inside. It automatically reversed it for us. Uh, so, which was pretty, pretty cool. Um, so let's go ahead and preview that cut. Let's go back into our 3D preview. And preview that, just that, that clean out cut. That profile cut is going to clean out that hole. And there's our grips. You know, I love the way it changes on me to medium wood. But, um, you know, not bad. I hope you guys get that. Uh, all right, was I the only one that looked at my phone? <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet you, I'm sorry about that. You probably all look like, oh, time to go. Uh, Y'all were hoping that was the class bell saying class is over. Uh, class can be over if we want. I mean, we're just talking modeling here. We're talking, you know, you guys want to talk about a pistol grip. So we've got two different versions here. Of course, the design is the design. As long as you project it onto that 3D model, you're good, you know. So whether you're doing some type of flourish design, whether you want to, you know, do some type of, uh, maybe you want to build up some type of thumb grab here or something, you know. You ever seen those grips that have that thumb rest on it and stuff? That's building, that's adding that shape into that model. Um, your crosshatch, if we reset this preview and we look at our crosshatch one more time, um, <clears throat> We don't need to see the rough cut. We all know what the rough cut looks like. But all those things. Uh, with the laser attachment, follow the contour of the 3D model. Well, yeah. Of course it will. Uh, it's because that laser beam is shooting down. It's cutting into whatever, whatever, you know, it's coming across. So, you depending on how high the contour is of your model, uh, that beam may get uh that beam may you know that 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 engraving may be lighter a little lighter on the sides and stuff um but one of the things is is there's a program out there uh called uh pick engrave pick engrave there's a call there's a you know and it uh it, it allows that laser to follow that contour of that model you know it's a neat little up uh, neat little program uh i downloaded and I purchased and downloaded pick engrave uh uh, weeks and weeks ago and I still haven't had a chance to use it yet I'm still working on that uh, for all you guys and girls that are wondering if I've uh, worked with it yet but um, but no that beams gonna follow that contour it's just it's just you're you're gonna be a little lighter 
on those uh, lower parts than you would on the higher parts and uh, but I, I believe that pick engrave uh, would kind of actually follow the contour and it actually adjust the power according to you know when it has to go under those contours and stuff so um, and all but you know, there's a little crosshatch diamond pattern you know right here in the middle of the crosshatch diamond pattern you know uh, let's let's turn off uh, vector zero not not that vector zero hold on a second um, Oh, Laney, you know how to select stuff. Get up on there. There you go. Don't be afraid to uh, cross over the lines. All right, delete. Let's turn on our crosshatch pattern here uh, for a quick moment. We're going to take and we're going to draw a rectangle in the draw rectangle tool. And I'm going to take and uh, draw a rectangle. I like that. And I'm going to come in and open up my draw text within a vector box. All right? Draw text within a vector box tool because I have a vector box here. And I'm going to write, uh, you know, if found, contact Laney. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, we're gonna go with a uh, a. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, there's a there's a font that I've been wanting to work with. Let me go with my marketing font. I really like the way it looks. Uh, it's kind of like an offset looking font, and I want this to be uh, to fit with normal margins in the center of this box. Okay. See that? All right. And I'm going to take my box here, group that together for a moment so that I can bring it over and snap to that center and then rotate. Now, once again, if I ungroup that uh, that group for a moment and just select my crosshatch and my rectangle last, I can trim by clearing inside that boundary, just like so. All right, and now I'm going to take that rectangle because I don't want that crosshatch coming right up to that border. So, and that border is a little bigger than I want anyway. So I'm going to offset it inward uh, 16th of an inch let's go a little lighter undo control Z we're gonna go 0.04 all right, now I can delete that original rectangle. All right, now if I go in there and create my V-carve toolpath, okay, I could have this V-carve in. I could have it raised text. That would look nice too as a raised text design in there. But uh, the way I like this uh, particular font is to be carved in. So let's actually take a look and look see and how it looks. Uh, first of all, so uh, V-carve toolpath. Bum, bum, bum. Zero start depth, 60 degree V bit, project onto 3D model, calculate, calculate. Now I need to recalculate my crosshatch, right? I got to recalculate my crosshatch because now I've got all this area out here that's missing, right? So let's go through and. Um, Oh Lord, let's go through. I should have everything grouped back together. All right, let's turn off that outside boundary. 
Let's turn off that group right there, the inside screw, not that model, the inside screw group. Oh, don't you hate when it does that? All right, zoom in, there we go. All right, let's turn off that rectangle for a moment. Let's turn off Laney for a moment. Let's turn off all of that. And group, G for group. Oh, ignoring component. Preview in the selection, okay. So actually I had a component in there, but it ignored it. It ignored the model that I had selected. Now we're gonna recalculate that cross hatch. Reset our preview. Let's take a look at our 3D finish cut, our cross hatch, and our new VCAR 3. Preview the visible tool pass. While that's calculating, let's take a look here. Will you have the laser for demonstration in New Jersey this weekend? That is a great question, uh, George. Uh, we won't be demoing it. We'll have it. Uh, we'll be talking about it and things. But uh, I think I sold the laser in Kansas City. So uh, I'll have to find out from Burl if he put another one on the in the crate for the New Jersey show. So you're going to see. You guys are going to experience buffering for a second. You're going to experience buffering for a second. Um, but, uh, I believe George, uh, will have it there. I believe we'll have the laser. We won't be demonstrating it. We won't be demonstrating it, but we'll have it there. Uh, the reason why we're not demonstrating it is because it does produce, you know, smoke. It's wood burning and all. And we don't have the proper, uh, you know, we don't have the proper kind of absorption area or something, you know, uh, inside the auditorium. We could tell him to open a window. All right, so let's run through this crosshatch pattern. Okay. All right. The reason why I like this font is that drop shadow type uh, design. Now, on that font, I wanted a little bit more defined. It didn't look very defined. We're going to give it a little bit more depth. I don't know. I kind of like it. I like it. But... You know what I mean? You can create anything that you want. Now, as a raised text design, if it was a raised text design, let's uh, let's go in and uh, change the uh, text font to something a little bit more not so drop shadowish. Uh, let's go to news BT. Now, if I hit this box right here, if I select, open that tool back up, if I select that boundary, my text, yeah, it was already created in that, so, Try that again. Open up my text box. L-A-N-E-Y. Alright, now I can rotate that. Alright, if I select my boundary and my text and do a v carve toolpath on this 
Now we're doing something with raise, kind of raised effect. Uh, we're going to do a, a zero start depth with a flat depth, very small, eighth of an inch. You know, is uh, you know eighth of an inch, 0.15. Uh, eighth of an inch might even be cutting it. You know, that's good. I don't want to go any bigger than that. I am going to use a little flat area clearance tool of an eighth of an inch end mill uh, to flatten out some of that area. Ba 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 ba. Let me find my eighth inch end mill hiding down here. And I want to project onto the 3D model and calculate. Okay, now if I reset that preview one last time and I preview that 3D finish cut and I preview our new little uh, grazings in and I preview our crosshatch, all those visible tool paths. Let's see what we did here. You're like, whoa, that was deep, Laney. And no, don't forget that model is getting milled away. So you're going to see this deep pocket and going, whoa, that looks way too deep. But no, that model is getting milled away. Okay, you see that surface material that's getting milled away? <clears throat> All right, it's running slow uh, because of the simple fact that, again, I got the preview quality simulation high. Um, all right, don't answer your phones, that's mine. All right, so let's see here. Will you have, uh, let's see here. What font was that called and the program was pick and grave? Uh, was that, that font that I was just using, that was my, um, that particular font was the marketing, marketing script font. You get three uh, different types of fonts with that marketing script font and um, that's what that was called and that was one of the three fonts you get uh, Wayne and that was a marketing script font one more time in dafont.com d-a-f-o-n-t.com is where you can download it and then uh, pick and grave yeah pick and grave uh, is that laser program that I really really am looking forward to trying out because you can do some really neat things with it from what I gather from some of the other customers uh, Stephen Allen I think and and a few others that have kind of recommended it <clears throat> all right so let's get that cross hatch in there finish this off Not too shabby. Now, of course, I didn't even have to do the V-carve inlay, uh, guys and girls, uh, with this. I could have done this all as one model cut with the name Laney there, and the Laney and the rectangle could have been part of the model. I could have created that shape from that model as well. But, <clears throat> all right, let's cut that profile cut, cut it out, and then... <laughs> I cannot believe I did that. I just messed up the whole model. Um, I, I, I clicked on preview select the toolpath and I did not have, I thought I had the profile toolpath clicked. I'll be doggone, Junior. That's all right. We're going to clean that up right now. We're going to go over here and we're going to, on just this, this vector right here, we're going to create a pocket toolpath. Now, of course, you wouldn't do this on your, you know, your table and all, but I, I want to clean it up in the design so I don't have to preview the whole thing again. Uh, I'm just going to <clears throat> mill a uh, small 20 thousandths, uh, 0.015 with an eighth inch end mill and project that tool path onto the 3D model. And I'm going to preview that select the toolpath and oh, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper now. That didn't work. That didn't work like how like I had planned. But all right, let's uh, let's get off this 3D view for a minute and let's talk about uh, you know, Laney. What if I don't want to make a pistol grip, but I'd like to model a pistol for carving on a plaque? 
uh, you know this property is protected by you know wireless high-speed broadband projectile whatever I don't care whatever your sign's gonna say um, a wireless projectile but um, the when you're building a model you always start from the foundation up okay and you guys saw me make this model we thought we were in this create shape tool so we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it fast uh, so <clears throat> hold on to your horses all right for the first part I want uh, this model to have some slightly rounded edges okay slightly rounded edges but I want to pretty much um, come in and uh, start to uh, clean up those edges but I, I don't want it to be just a straight blocky looking thing so I'm gonna go up pretty high with my angle I am gonna do a curve profile I'm gonna go probably about a uh, uh, 90 degree angle I'm going to do a base height of a quarter of an inch oops Come on now, Laney. 0.25. I'm going to do a limit, meaning I want to kind of flatten it off. I'm going to limit this, <clears throat> limit this uh, to a limit of a sixteenth of an inch, and I want it to be an add. And let's get into the 2D view so you can see this process here, uh, this tiled view here. zoom this out oh I'm like where is it at there it is I had it minimized on the bottom of the screen all right look at there it's minimizing why is it doing that to me let me get my screens right and tight guys hold on one second here let me get my screens right and tight. All right, 2D view, 3D view, maximized out, very good. And well, you son of a gun, why are you doing that to me? What'd y'all do? Oh. <clears throat> Stand by. Stand by. Hold on a second now. Hold on. Alright, so that's full screen. This one should be full screen. And if I come back over here and get my windows tight and right, oops. That's that's my window right there. <laughs> Oh, 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 don't do that. I want to right click. Right click. There we go. It's starting to come back together now. There we go. Lord have mercy. I had it, uh, I had the screen minimized the wrong size. Okay. Once again, as we were saying, uh, in that create shape tool, I'm going to go 90 quarter inch with a 16th of an inch. I want this to be an add. I want to click apply and build that foundation. Uh, this is going to be the foundation for everything else. Okay. Uh, once I have that foundation, now I can start to build all of my modeling and everything up on it. Now the one thing I am going to do is because I like the new model that I created, maybe not with the cross hatch and the laning in it, but I'm going to go ahead and start a new component. And 
before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And I'm going to remove. No, I'm not going to remove that. I'm going to take this guy right here. Right there. Oops. And. I'm going to put him in its place. I like him. Let me actually get them in the right place and we'll be good to go. So I kind of like that one. Uh, now he's going to be green right now because uh, I hadn't made a mall nut yet. All right. So now that we have that model back into the Create Shape tool, uh, for the uh, main part of the body, there's there's a, there's an undercut here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this, this is raised up here. And then this lower part is kind of undercut in a little. So I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, this part of the body here. And I'm going to go ahead and that's going to be a pretty much a flat profile. Um, I believe it's pretty much a flat profile. I'm trying to imagine the gun. And uh, this is going to be only about an eighth of an inch up. Oops. Syntax error because I typed in an equal sign. All right. And I didn't have any math in there. Eighth of an inch. I'm going to add this to the existing model. I'm going to click apply. Let's build that up. Uh, eighth of an inch. That looks good, but let's go. Let's go with. Let's go with. Uh, let's give it a little bit more height. So point two, point two. Click apply. Now don't worry about all the straight edges and all that. We're gonna be smoothing that out after the fact. Um, we're gonna be smoothing that out after the fact. All right, we're gonna start a new component here. Uh, now we've got the, we'll go with uh, the trigger guard. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the lever here. So we're, that's going to be sticking up as well. So we'll grab that part there. And this is going to be a pretty much a flat profile. Uh, let's go an eighth of an inch. Uh, I do that with all those decimals one through five and apply now should I change this gun to a lighter color you guys can y'all see that or you or can you see these components popping in here and stuff uh, let me know <clears throat> all right so we've got that now we're gonna start a new component and on this part here if I'm going point two on this one that I created a moment ago, there's a little understep, a slight little understep inward a little bit. So I would go with a point one seven and click add. Alrighty, alrighty. Now I'll start merging these things together. We'll change the component styles and stuff so things start blending a little bit more. Uh, this, you know, instead of sitting right up on top. 
but let's go ahead now with a new component here and for the new next component we're gonna go with the trigger guard let's build that part up and the trigger now that's gonna be this is gonna be subtracted this one here and this is gonna be subtracted here so we're gonna build up these two areas right here and that's gonna be a quarter of an inch <laughs> you guys you know, I'm talking about the drinking game uh, let's see here this is gonna be do I want uh, it's gonna be a flat profile we're gonna add that in uh, let's see what I think a quarter inch is gonna be too much eighth point one two five let's build that up okay uh, we can make it a little thicker but now we're gonna start a new component all right, so on this model here, and now that should be a space, unless that's uh, unless that's uh, built up. This is definitely a hole, so let's subtract. That's going to go all the way 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We're going to subtract that from the rest of the model. All right, so we're getting there, and let's see here. Now on this front part, this might be a that. Uh, oops, always click start new component uh, when you're selecting your vectors. Uh, you know, but this part here might be uh, trigger safety. You know, I don't know if the 1911 has that little trigger safety release thing. So we'll go ahead and make that a small. We'll give that a small little uh, 0.0625 height to it. Oops, we want to add, not subtract. Add. There we go. Click apply. All right, so now these, uh, let's go with the, let's go up here. And let's focus up here. <clears throat> all of these parts, all of these parts, this, this, that, are sight. And everything even uh, I think those are more cut in I believe they're more cut in more so so we'll leave that alone uh, this is gonna be etched we'll subtract that away these are ribs so we want to build those up a little bit so let's start with just those three components we're gonna go with an eighth of an inch 0.125 and click add All right. Okay. All right. This will make sense here in a moment. Uh, we're going to start a new component. This outer rectangle. Notice this outer rectangle here uh, is not really a rectangle, right? It's um, you know, it's just a drawing. So we're going to grab that one next. Right, all the way back. That whole thing except for we've already created the component on this part so we don't need that and that part and that's going to also be raised up an eighth of an inch 0.125 click apply all right so far so cooled okay next component All right, now this looks like nothing until we get it all smoothed out and stuff. Uh, let's see here. This center area here, uh, since it's kind of almost like a little thumb thing or something, we're going to recess that in a little bit. So we're going to take that just about a sixteenth of an inch. Or No, actually it gets built out more. It's more of a thumb trigger thing. So we're going to build that up an additional eighth of an inch. Apply. Yeah, 
something like that. Okay, uh, we got some screw holes. This is uh, these are buttons, a uh, little clip release, and uh, something else. So we're gonna start a new component, and these guys. This one. Hold the shift key. These two guys are gonna be popped out just a eighth of an inch. And then the center part of them, the center part of those, start a new component. These are gonna be popped out just a little bit more. They're kinda of like a button. A uh, little bit rounded, not flat. See, I've been using flat profiles, but we're gonna actually round these two inside, oops, these two inside ones off like little buttons so little soft contour uh, we're gonna go a sixteenth of an inch add that in okay alright so we've got uh, our two screw heads on the uh, screw heads and everything we'll go ahead and oops stand by See what I did there. See what I did. I selected that vector and it wasn't quite time because I didn't select on create new component. All right, so we're gonna uh, start a new component. Oh, apply, bear with me a second. We're gonna click apply to fix that. There we go. <clears throat> and then now we're gonna start a new component. All right, on the screw heads here, these guys, uh, we're gonna ungroup that, U for ungroup, and that way I can uh, come in and grab just these. These are gonna have a flathead profile. <coughs> uh, they're not gonna be raised up a eighth of an inch. They're gonna be kind of very small. They're almost flush. Um, So I need them to build up from here, from this bottom. So let's go ahead and click apply. That should put that down in the down underneath. You see that screw head down there that just popped up. Let's select both of these so we can do them at one time. We've got to give this some base height. So we got to build this base height up. All right, it's getting a little higher, a little higher. So let's go a little higher. All right, not bad. That's about the maximum we can exceed, uh, you know, on that model. About the maximum we can exceed. Uh, I could come in and type in, uh, let's go 0 0.3. Let's see if we can get it up a little bit higher and click apply. That looks good. A slight recess. Um, oh shoot! Let's go three five. All right, good enough. All right, the next component. Start a new component. It's gonna be this little rivet down here, and we're gonna build him up just a small amount uh, point one two five give him a little bit of a uh, give him a little bit of a curved profile all right so let's take a look and the only thing that we're missing is our crosshatch that is a tool path Right, that is a, v, a 2D toolpath. It would not be part of the model component. So let's go ahead and call that. Uh, let's take a look at everything. The only thing that I missed were these three little guys right up here. So let's select them. And we're gonna subtract them away. Very small amount. They're just little notches. Uh, they're gonna be point. 
Ah, too many decimal points. Oh, three. All right, we're almost done, guys. So we're going to click apply. All right, just kind of get that as three in there. All right, now we're going to close this tool out. Let's minimize our 2D view here. Let's maximize our 3D view. Let's pull this up straight out. Now we're 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 this is the rough of the gun. Okay. This is the rough of the gun. Now we need to come in. Now we need to come in and bake all of these components together. Okay? So we need to bake all of these components together. And the grip, remember the body grip down here is part of that as well. But again, remember, we don't want to bake and lose all of our individual components in case there's something that we want to change. So we want to, first off, let's do this the smart way. We're going to take our four components on that grip. We are going to group them together. We're going to duplicate that group. Drag it up here with our component. Now notice, notice that now I have two groups so that, that, that grip got much fatter. Well, that's because I need to turn off level one. When I turn off level one, it'll go back down to its normal size, okay? All right, so now we're gonna take and uh, ungroup all of these guys, I'll ungroup them right in there with everyone. And we're going to take all these components. I'm holding down my shift key and selecting all these components all the way up and baking them into one. Now I could have, instead of using so many flat profiles, I could have used some angular profiles or a little bit of more bubbles to give it more of a rounded shape instead of a flat shape. You know, I could have given these could have been rounded, you know, to give the barrel, uh, um let's real quick control z to undo let's find these three guys right here one two three where are they at they were put together in one was that component two you'll see it when you click it uh, you'll see it highlight um <clears throat> component 16 no 13 oh close 12 Oh, almost there. 11. There we go. Uh, we can do in that, uh, we can change. We could do give that a little bit of a rounded profile instead of uh, so flat, however you want to do. Uh, you would have to remove that component and start again with those three vectors. You know, uh, very simply, if we selected those three vectors, or not just the three, but the shift key that 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 even this you know uh even that component down there um this guy right here and that guy right there um we could go with a curved profile very light subtle uh with that eighth of an inch and click apply Now it's so fat, it's fat because of the simple fact that we have the other model underneath, right? So let's get rid of, we've got that component, 18, that's the new one we created. Let's get rid of component 13, delete that out. You know, uh, that one right there was component <clears throat> originally. And you can give these names, guys. I'm, I just default component to for speed and all. But you can give them names, so we're going to delete that one as well. All right, bring that down to a more subtle. Uh, whatever it is you want to do uh, with the with you know uh, with your with your model, um, however it wants to be. Uh, if I go into the trigger, see how fat the trigger got back there, and everything. If I go in. Um, that trigger and these parts were combined together so you know whatever it is you want to do you can round those off you can shape it better and all that now 
Let's go back to where we were before we Okay, I want to talk to you about the smoothing. Uh, so once again, we're going to bake these together. Bake all these components. And watch that cake rise as it bakes together. There you go. <laughs> all right. Now, we're going to apply a smoothing filter. Now, the smoothing filter is going to look at all these contours, curves, and everything, and just kind of blend them all together for us. And that's what we want. We want to, you know, we, we, right now we have just kind of a rough looking model. Uh, but, bam, you know. All right, a little bit too much smoothing on some of the components and things. Uh, but we can come over here. Let's back off a little bit, you know. On my engraving, my engraving, if I would, uh, you know, come back instead of an eighth of an inch, I might come back and select just that engraving area and do like a 0 0.01, a 10,000, so it's just like a light etch, what have you. Uh, but we're going to click OK to lock in that smoothing. All right. And so we have our model. Firearm. All right. All right. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Know what I mean? All right. So let's see here. Uh, that is one fat finger guard. Is that what uh, fat finger mod? Yeah, I know, right? It's uh, yeah that trigger. I'm not sure why it's so fat in the back end. But I didn't draw all the gun. Um. What are the colored buttons in raised or lower combined and other components buttons for? Okay, so in the create shape tool, you have in your combined mode, how you're combining models together, you're either building up that model using the add mode, which is adding to the previous component before it. You're either subtracting from the previous component or you are merging high meaning it's merging two models together uh, at the highest point of the previous model and you're, you're merging low okay or you're merging low so uh, with the the shaded uh, areas there that's your merging two models together and what that means is is if I came in here and let me draw uh, real quick, uh, an example of this. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Where's my drawing tab? Is it? I go into that modeling tab, and let's say I, that I I build this, you know, create a shape on this model, uh, and uh, create a, a flat profile, three eighths of an inch deep. Okay, let's go into the double view so you guys can see this. Oh, I did it again. Daggum it. All right. So, if I go in and add, add my inner rectangle to this, I'll always select start new component when you do this stuff. New component when you're selecting your second or next vectors. There we go. All right, so if I grab this, if I add this, uh, and I'm going to go a dome profile, I'm going to go a curve profile, a uh, little, uh, we'll go a 40 degree curve, and no base height, and apply. Okay, now, if I add this, then it's sitting on top of that previous model. If I subtract it, then it's subtracting from the previous model. Okay. If I merge high, then you're going to see that that part, it disappears, right? Well, it's underneath here. The component is underneath here, but this is a 3 8 inch model. 
So I have to build the base height up that meet in the bottom end of the model. I have to build the meet up of that component that I'm trying to create. So it will start to present itself. And I can come up higher. All right, gotta go up higher. Okay, no matter what I do, that model's base height is not, because of that dome and that angle and all, is not gonna protrude that 3 eighths. That 3 eighths is quite deep. So, let's come back in here and let's go higher. Let's go 0 0.5. Okay, so you can see, now that 0.5 has got me, you know, right at, you know, I got, I got, now I got some base underneath this, but what if I want this dome sitting right on top and I've got these two models merged together rather than adding them? Well, let me back this off to a 0.375 to the same base height as my flat part and click apply, you know. So now I'm, those two are merged together, right? They're inside of each other, they're merged. Now, if I merge the lowest points, okay? If I merge the lowest points, again, that model, oops, sorry. Because when you merge low or you subtract, it subtracts from the top. Well, now I'm subtracting from you know three eighths of an inch down so you're not seeing it so if I bring this base height to no base height you can see that it's subtracting from the lowest parts okay it's, it's taking my domed shape my profiled curve at 40 degrees and it's removing it from the inside of that part so I'm merging low at the lowest points. It's merging those two together at the lowest point. Not the highest point, but the lowest point. The highest point would be here, this one. Okay, and again, I have to build up the base underneath it now. And click apply. Okay. All right, so that's what, um, that's what it may be. How many of the individual tool paths can be combined? You mean the components? I've never reached its limit. How many of the components can be combined? I've never reached its limit. As far as tool paths, I've had projects with multiple tool paths, multiple tool paths. Uh, over you know 15 of them so I've uh, you know again I've never reached your limits uh, Rochelle all right guys and girls I'm gonna have to call it quits here in just a little bit because I do have to go to New Jersey tonight uh, and so we're gonna call it a day and uh, uh, so ask your questions now if you have any questions uh, regarding this um, let me know if this was helpful in any way if you learned anything from this in any way, let me know. Um, but what is the total carve time on that project? On the pistol grips, George? Because I didn't create a project, uh, uh, I didn't create a toolpath on the um, the actual gun. But if we close this tool and move over to the toolpath side, on the 3D finish of that pistol grip, the crosshatch the profile cut um the full cross hatch the profile cut you're looking at a, a total combined time of about an hour and six minutes an hour and six minutes okay now that's based on my speeds and feeds on my bit, you know, speeds and feeds, my step overs and all, and I'm running on my 3D finish cut. I'm running my eighth inch end mill, 60 inches a minute, 15 inches a minute for the plunge. 
Um, and, uh, you know, my V bit I run 35 inches a minute, and my profile cut I'm running 55, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys and girls like this. I will uh, clean up this uh, 911 model and I'll throw it out there on Facebook if anybody wants it. Um, it's not to scale, so if you try to model your grips off of it for your 911, 1911, uh, it um, probably wouldn't fit. Uh, will you post the grip files just got here? Yeah, I'll post them. I'll post them. Now again, it's not to scale, Debbie. So you have to adjust the sizing to match your uh, off topic question. But would any of the group be interested in a class in making urns for pets uh, that have passed? I have been asked several times recently, uh, but I've not yet created one. I'd be happy. I make urns. I'd be happy to teach a class on that. We could do that uh, Monday or Tuesday. It's a pretty straightforward class. Uh, you're just creating your, uh, your uh, depending on your shape. Now, if you're talking about a vessel type urn where it's a vase shaped for a fourth axis, we could do that as well. Um, I, you just won't be able to hollow it out. But if it's a you know a box type urn, you got to make parts and you got to make the base and the top. You're going to do some nice engraving and and uh, you know may John Smith rest in peace. You know, uh, loving father, husband with some models. You know, roses or something in it. We can absolutely do that. Not a problem. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I am Laney Shaughnessy, and if you have any questions, uh, post them in the Facebook group, or uh, and I'll try to get to them uh, over the weekend while I'm at the shows. Uh, as always, you can always reach out to me via text or phone call or email me at sales at digitalwoodcarver.com. Thank you all, and have a great night. Goodbye now.